Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make such a 200 watt DIY YouTube Studio LED. Let's get started. Now in order to make the LED you'll need a couple of things. First of all, of course, is the LED itself. It's a cop LED. It's rated for 200 watts, 20 volts. Of course, you also need a heatsink that, well, matches the dimensions of the LED. I've provided links to the items in the description below. And please keep in mind that when you order the LED, you order the LED with the remote control option. Uh, they're all the same. So uh, some listings on AliExpress, for example, uh, list and tell you that they're rated for 12 amps this is not the case they are all rated for 6 amps uh, as the mosfets are exactly the same what you do want to order are tiny uh, heat sinks that you uh, want to put on the mosfets themselves now i'll also Put a link in the description for the heat sinks as there are heat sinks for some kind of stepper motor driver and not for the mosfets so that you can uh, order those heat sinks uh, yourself you'll also need a dc to dc bug converter it may also be a bug boost and a 140 by 140 millimeter uh, 12 volt computer fan in order to blow air over the heat sink and cool the led and the uh, MOSFETs. Now in order to make this great project uh, as a full assembly you can download the uh, 3D models that are provided in the description down below for free that you can use to create your own LED. It features cutouts for the wires so here is the bug converter for the uh, fan. So you can install this fan header over here and it will allow you to uh, well, basically connect a fan to your system because this needs cooling and that's why we've got the heatsink for it but it needs cooling that's for sure so you'll need 8 m4 nuts these have a length of one centimeter so m4 and one centimeter in thread length and you'll need five m3s with a thread length of one and a half centimeters and one M3 with a thread length of 0.8 centimeters. How are we going to do this? Well, as you can see, uh, I've made a small hole for the controller to go into over here, but it requires that we remove the, the heat shrink of the controller. So this uh, design does not feature a, a DC jack. So what you can do is connect an XT60 connector to it those little battery connectors that you all know and while we are here let's take a look at the power supply module for the fan it's this little bug converter now please keep in mind that you'll need to set it to 12 volts 13 is also fine before uh, you screw everything in now i'm using a 140 by 140 millimeter fan there are mounting holes at the bottom for that fan so you can connect it and mount it securely to the device well since this has heated up let's remove the wires from the led like so now that went a lot smoother than last time uh, as you saw now this one is good and this one needs to go Right, and grab the new wire. Now this will convert your, well, you could also just put in 24 volt uh, to 12 or to the voltage that you actually set to. And it will allow you to, yeah, attach a fan. So we're also going to swap Now this should fit inside here. Oh, that's still hot, obviously. But please uh, put in the wires and then put in the board. The output wires are at the bottom. So you want to pull them out of here. And we do need it to be flat since the 
heatsink will otherwise be touching it, uh, which is aluminum, and that's not good. You can uh, cover it up with some tape if you like, which I'm going to do just to well, hopefully make it extra secure. Then if you're looking for the output, the output is located with the two ICs on the left. So this is the output and this is the input. The next challenge is quite challenging because we need to cram this wire into this hole uh, without actually removing these two wires. And remember, the polarity actually matters, of course, but is also uh, you can also derive that from the board. And oh, it's also displayed on the board itself. So the top side of the board, in the middle, you can see a plus symbol. That, of course, is for the positive side of the input and the place the, the side where the heatsink is attached to that is the output like so And it just started to rain, so I'm sorry if you hear rainy uh, noises. Oh, that was big enough. Wow. Well, one is, but the other isn't. So now the next challenge will be to get the wires of the LED around the heatsink and onto the pads. There you go, that's one. The other one will be a lot more of a challenge because the heatsink is completely in the way. I don't have much playroom, but it should be attached with the heatsink on there. That's pretty awesome. Now, let's attach the control wires for the fan. The fan should start spinning, which it does. It's time to uh, install the LED back in its casing. So let's uh, screw in the larger screws. Pretty good uh, fit and seal, and let's install the fan now. I'm hoping that this just screws in. Keeps it in place. Well, 
like so. You can actually use hot glue as a uh, screw thread. As long as you don't over tighten it, it actually works. Let's connect the fan. Connect the power. And we should not see things blow up right now. And it should, st yes, it still turns on pretty good. And as you can see, the lining is still there. Finally time to screw on the front bezel. Pick the nice side of course, that's this side. And uh, call it a wrap. And yeah, I'll, I'm hoping that it will uh, survive. And if it doesn't, I'll need to uh, buy another power regulator, LED power regulator. So, it's back together. Now, for powering my LED, I've got a few options. Buy a big 200 watt power supply, uh, which I'm not sure if this uh, light controller is able to even handle. A computer power supply, 12 volts at 19 amps. I think that that should be enough. And some power supplies, I'm not sure if this one does, but some power supplies even allow uh, tweaking the output voltage so that you can, well, basically just set it to 15 or 16 volts. Let's open this thing up to see if we can do that with this one as well. Obviously this power supply hasn't been turned on in a great while. What you need to look for is a trimmer pot that is well, obviously used to tweak the output voltage. But I d oh, yes, yes, yes. There is one. There is one. All right, so how do I get this on camera? It's do, 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 do. right there. You see over there. That's one. So now, what we need to do? Uh, this could get dangerous, of course is we need to put our screwdriver in there yeah the yellow is uh, 12 volts and what we also need is a jumper just a paper clip or a piece of wire that will enable us to turn on the power supply without a computer oh i've got the jumper wire over here i've found 12 volts in the peripheral Oh, supply and my lead just dropped out. There you go. I've bridged the green connector with a ground pin. So now if we turn this on, 12 volts. Uh, it will shut itself down above 13 volts or something. I 
I think this is the limit. So 13.74, absolutely great. Okay, so what we need to do now is obviously be very careful because some of the caps are actually charged. So now we have got a modded power supply, which still should be able to deliver quite some power. Please keep in mind that this power supply should not be used in a regular computer anymore. I printed a nice label, 13.74 volts. So it's nice and clear. Basically, this power supply will only be used for the light. What you need to do is you, you need to cut every cable that's not black, yellow or green. So if you want, you can choose to put a button between these two wires, which I might still do later on. But for now, I'll just solder them together since that will permanently enable the power supply. And finally, insert them in your connector and well, I have just a matter of soldering them uh, in place. Like so. Now click the matching end of your connector in place and when you insert a power cord into your power supply you should see a voltage of 13.7 volts. Let me turn on the light. 13.7 volts at the output or less if your power supply can supply less. Obviously, we are not finished yet. Can test it, so just connect the two together and enable the power supply. Boom. And turn on the LED. Wow, cool. This is at 50%. 100%. Wow. It's doing it. The LED is now lit up at 100%. And the remote control works perfectly. Now let's see the striping. I don't think there is any. No, there isn't. When you start to dim it, the striping appears. Wow, really cool. Really cool, man. This is working beautifully. So, but obviously you can't have the power supply this close to the light at any time. So what we're now going to do, we're now going to make an extension cord. For that we need soldering iron again and two connectors and they both need to be oh the, the one needs to be female and the other one needs to be male so female or male and female let's strip the wires and twist them and let's solder them onto the connector done push the two together push it together and you've got yourself a perfectly nice extension cord so I still wanted to show you the tripod mount it's at the bottom over here nicely convenient lift so it doesn't accidentally touch the fan. Put it in there and you just screw it as you would with a regular camera. I have to use my tool. You can tighten it and now it is a all in one module 
pretty cool. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, all in all, really good thing. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.